Hi, welcome to how to manage DNS records with PowerShell. I'd just like to go over a couple of quick prerequisites with you. To perform this demo require Windows Server 2012 or 2016 with the following roles installed. The Active Directory Domain Services and DNS Server. You'll also require the DNS Server PowerShell module loaded. Now, in order to create this environment, you may want to take a look at the How to Create an Active Directory Forest with PowerShell, if you're not familiar with these procedures. All right, let's move on. Let's get started with viewing records. If we want to just take a look at all the records in the zone, we'll use our Get DNS Server Resource Record for the zone corp.ad. And that gives you a nice flat list of all the records in this zone. Now, I do prefer this type of list over the DNS Manager. And I'll show you why briefly here. If you flip over to the DNS Manager and take a look. Now, if you look, going down, there's quite a number of folders, and they go down quite a few levels. So if you're looking for a specific record, it does take quite a number of folder clicks, as you can see, to get all the way down here. So if we switch back over to our PowerShell window here, as you can see, this gives you all the records for the zone in one nice list. It makes it easier to find what you're looking for. Now, if we want to filter this down to just say the IPv4 host records, so your A records, we just add the RR type parameter and specify that we're looking for A records. And that gives you this list here with just our IPv4 hosts. Now we can filter that down a little bit more just by using the where object host name does not equal at. Let's take a look at that. And there's our list without the records that have an at symbol. Now you may be wondering what that at symbol is. That over here in the DNS manager is the records that are listed as same as parent folder. It's a little bit more descriptive here than it is in PowerShell. And in PowerShell, those records show up as just a at symbol. Now, if we want to filter that out, say we're looking for records where their time to live is greater than or equal to 15 minutes. Now, typically, this will just be actual hosts versus some of the domain DNS records and your forest DNS records. This gives you, in this case, just the three hosts that are in the domain. As you can see, their time to live is one hour, 20 minutes, and one hour. Now, if we wanted to take a look for a different domain, or a different zone rather, look at the computer name DC3, and we're going to go to our zone canada.corp.ad, and we're still going to filter out those at symbols, so the same as parent folder records. And that'll give us a view of everything that's in the canada.corp.ad zone. And as you can see, there's not much in that zone, just the one domain controller. And that's a quick overview of viewing records. Let's move on to creating our records now. So use the add DNS server resource record A commandlet. Now we're going to create one for host call web app 25, put it in our corp.ad zone, and give it the IPv4 address of 192.168.2.224. Put that in place. And say we also, you can use this for creating records for printers, say if you don't want to have those added dynamically. So we're going to create one called Red Deer Print 01, put it in our corp.ad zone, and the IPv4 address is going to be 2.56. Let's take a look at our zone, and there you can see the last two entries in our list, the Red Deer Print 01 and our Web App 25. Now it's working out really well, except we got a uh, call from our manager that says, hey, it was nice you created that record for us, but uh, we've changed the naming convention for the printers, and you also put it in the wrong zone. Well, not a big deal. We'll just use the remove DNS server resource record commandlet, again for corp.ad, and we'll remove our red deer print 01 with the resource record type of A. Take that out of there. Confirm that yes, we do want to get rid of that. And there we are, no problem, our record's gone. Now you can add a dash force if you don't want to be bothered with the confirmation, but I don't know about you, but I prefer just to have that little extra confirmation just to sanity check, make sure that's what I wanted to do. So we'll go back and recreate our resource record and we'll give it the airport code for Red Deer, which is CYQF dash printer dash zero one, zone name canada.corp.ad, which means we also have to put it on DC03, which is our domain controller and DNS server for the canada.corp.ad zone and domain. Give it its address of 56 again, 
And that's that. Let's just take a look and make sure that did get created. And there we are. There's our proper printer in the proper zone. Proper naming. Everybody's happy now. Now you can also create IPv6 addresses. So use the add DNS resource record quad A. Now we're going to create one for our IT intranet server. The zone again is in corp.ad and our IPv6 address fc00 colon colon 0128. And to look those up you just need to do your resource record type quad A and that'll give you the list of just those records. And there's our newly created IT intranet. So move on to our PTR records. So these are our records for our reverse lookup zone. So matching IP addresses to their host names. So we're going to create one of the add DNS resource record PTR. Our name is going to be 56, which is the last octet in its IP address. PTR domain name. There's the fully qualified domain name for the printer. Zone name, that's it, because it's a reverse lookup zone. Even the IP address is reverse. So it's a 2.168.192.in-addr.arpa. And create that on DC3 in this case. So we'll run that, see how that goes for us. Uh oh, looks like we've got ourselves a bit of an error. Well, let's take a look and see if we can figure out why we're getting this particular error. Oh, there's our problem right in the first line there. Zone 2.164.192 was not found on server DC3. And that's a good point to bring up that your reverse lookup zones are not created by default. You do need to go in and create them manually yourself. So in this case, we'll just do an add DNS server primary zone on DC3. Network ID 192.168.2.0/24, and in this case, I'm going to set my replication scope to forest. You can set it to domain if you wish, but I prefer to set it to forest just to make sure it gets out to all the domain controllers and all the DNS servers. So we'll go ahead and create that, and let's just do a quick check to make sure that zone did actually get created properly using the get DNS server zone. And there we are, about halfway down. There's our 2.168.192-in-addr.arpa. And is DS integrated it's perfectly fine there. All right, let's go back up and recreate our PTR record now. Didn't get an error this time. Looks like we're good to go. Let's just do a quick check and make sure it is in our zone. There it is. Hostname 56. It's a record type of PTR. And there's our fully qualified domain name. All right, let's move on to CNAME records. Now, CNAMEs are handy if you need to create an alias to an actual host name. So in this case, we want to create one for called finance, perhaps for a web application for the finance department. Now it's easier to do this and create a CNAME record called finance and point it to web app 25 rather than having to go around to the entire finance department every six months when you redeployed your web app server to web app 27 or web app 14 and have to go back and change everyone's bookmarks to that. It's easier just to call it finance and pointed to the relevant host name. Let's just take a quick look here. Make sure it got created properly. And there's our finance app under CNAME and pointing to webapp25.corp.ad. No problem at all, easily done. Now your SRV records, so these are your service locator records. Now occasionally what's going to happen is it'll get, the service record will get lost, your clients won't be able to find the relevant service, and you need to re-register your SRV records. Now what you can't do in this case, unfortunately, is use the register DNS client. What that'll do is re-register your host record, but it won't re-register your SRV record. What you're going to need to do is restart the next net logon service. So essentially just restart the Active Directory directory services. Let's do a quick restart there. And what that does then, that forces refresh of the SRV records. Just make sure our service is up and running. It is. We are all good to go. And that's uh, pretty much all you need to know about re-registering your SRV records if they get lost. And that brings us to the end of our topic, how to manage DNS resource records with PowerShell.